Hello everybody! Welcome to another Valheim video. Today we're going to be looking at sequence breaking in Valheim. Valheim is an awesome game that has a great progression. You don't need to break it. But if you want to try it out, it's really, really fun. And here we have the first contender, Frost Arrows. Frost Arrows are insanely powerful. And what's interesting about them is they're an end game item. But technically, you can get them as soon as you get fire arrows. Technically, all you need to do to get frost arrows is be able to kill a drake. You don't actually even need an iron pickaxe. The drakes will drop this frost item here, the freeze gland. If they haven't seen you yet, just with a fine wood bow and a fire arrow, you can pop them right out of the sky. Normally, you would use an iron pickaxe and mine these obsidian nodes. We're skipping progression in this, right? So you don't have an iron pickaxe. How do you get the obsidian? Throughout the mountains, you'll find various different structures. Within these structures are treasure chests. And inside these chests can be all sorts of crazy items. The best being obsidian, onion seeds, and already made frost arrows. There's lots of different structures in the mountains that have a chance of spawning one of these chests. You can also find them inside frost caves, however, they're pretty rare and frost caves are pretty hard. The general rule of thumb is that if the structure is visible in the mountains, it probably has a chance to have a chest. So these cabins can have chests, and these castles can have chests too. As you can see though, you won't always get obsidian. But I mean, come on, frost arrows and onions? That's pretty valuable stuff. Frost arrows are really powerful in all the biomes, to be honest, but especially if you get them earlier and you have them in the swamp, oh, they're so good. And these frost arrows are one of the only arrows that can actually damage bone mass. You see how little damage that fire arrow did? But I just equip a frost arrow and watch this. Boom, you can actually do some damage, even in the horrible gear and access I have right now. Look at his health. Let's see something even more crazy. I'm in the Mistlands, and there's actually an item you can harvest in the Mistlands with a club. Yeah, nothing fancy. I'm talking about a level four club. Watch this. Black marble, trust me, you want some black marble. And all you gotta do is find a little bit of coastline that has Mistlands, and then destroy one of these things. That's it. You don't need to explore too deep. You just need to get a little bit of that black marble, that sweet, sweet black marble. It will take absolutely forever, but, <laughs> and, but eventually you will be rewarded with four black marble. And you'll need eight, so you have to do this twice. As you can imagine, it's much faster if you have a stronger weapon, but you really can do it with the most basic weapons in the game. You just have to wail on it for like 20, 30 minutes. Eventually, it'll work. That being said though, there is actually an easier way to do this. Most of these black marble structures are actually disassemblable. The stone cutter is going to allow you to just take this stuff apart. And this will be a much easier way to get black marble. You really only do need just eight black marble. Once you have that eight black marble, you'll be able to make the mortar and pestle just with some fine wood and core wood. And this is gonna put you a whole tier ahead. The significance of this eight black marble is that it allows you to upgrade your cooking to level three when it normally should just be level two. The level three cauldron will allow you to make ice cream and wolf skewer, which are really powerful foods if you're just in the black forest and the swamp. Normally, you don't get these items until you're able to make this butcher's table. And because the butcher's table needs silver, that means that these foods aren't available to you until after you get silver. Using this workaround gives you the food before you get silver. For the next sequence break, we will break into a crypt without a swamp key. This is the only break that I think the devs are actually gonna fix because they already tried to fix it, but for some reason, construct your workbench. And here's your key, this fine wood chair here. Ooh, she looks nice, doesn't she? This is labeled chair, but really it's a lock pick sort of right under the padlock, facing perpendicular to the gate, right? You just put it there, and then you sit on the chair, and then you sort of look up, and then boop, you just walk through. See that? You used to be able to do it with a bunch of items. Anything you could sit on would work. Whereas now, you have to use the chair, and you gotta look down, and then sometimes it doesn't work, see? It's not perfect, 
But if you just keep trying, eventually you inevitably get in. See? And this has become such a reliable way to get into the crypts that I actually do it this way. I just totally skip the Elder. And I find that it's really fun. The boss battles in Valheim, personally, I don't find them to be the most enjoyable part of the game. But maybe that's just me. Now, for the final and what I think is the greatest sequence break of all, what if I told you that you can get not only Krom, but an Arbalast once you're in the Iron Age? As soon as you can smelt iron, you can get these two incredible weapons. This is an epic adventure for you to actually accomplish, but it is technically possible. You can get this stuff without even killing Motor. But how does one go about this exactly? Because in order to make these two items, you do need to make a Black Forge, which is the crafting bench from the Mistlands. To make the Black Forge, you'll need black marble, some wood from the Mistlands, and five black cores. The black marble, you already saw how you can get a little bit, and the Yurg wood, I'll show you next. To reliably get the wood without having an axe, you'll need to find an area like this. There's areas where the Mistlands borders on the plains, and not only that, but the mist doesn't actually cover all of the Mistlands. You can see here that there is actually a clearing with no mist. And in this clearing, there is a tree. This is the circumstance that you need to easily get the wood. And when I say easy, eh, because you see, you're going to have to get real close to this guy. Do you see what he just did there? This is a Seeker Brute, one of the strongest enemies in the game. And all you have to do is get near the wood, and they'll start doing these AoE attacks, where they literally pound the ground. There you go. Look at that. Boom. We now have Yurgwood, and those goblins came in at the perfect time, because I'm sure that that Seeker will make quick work of them. Meanwhile, I can run away with my freshly acquired Yurgdrasil wood. This place has gotten rather eventful. This is actually a perfect segue, because by bringing enough goblins in, eventually you'll be able to kill those Mistlands monsters that inevitably show up in these clearings. And killing those monsters will give you Carapace and Seeker Meat. And they'll also give you Mandibles. And all these items are useful because they can be used at the Black Forge to make a Carapace Spear. The strongest spear in the game. And it's technically available as soon as you have iron. But you don't have the Black Forge yet. How do we get those Black Cores? Well, I got good news and bad news. The good news is, you only need to get five of these cores, and once you get them once, you're good forever. The bad news is, you gotta get them from these abandoned mines, and they're full of horrific enemies. With some luck, you'll find these hidden doors. But go through those hidden doors, and you'll find these lootable black cores. And once you find five, that's the hardest part. Done. And the last piece of these puzzles is this bunny here. If you look closely at these bunnies, they're actually covered in scales. You can find hair all along the border of the Mistlands, and plenty of times you'll actually just be able to get their hides because enemies like goblins will just kill them naturally. Let's just follow this bunny and see how he inevitably runs off into the plains and dies. He's lucky this goblin camp was already clear. Come on, Mr. Bunny, you can do it. Oh, a tar pit, good choice. Oh, oh yeah, there we go. That's one way to get your scale hide. Thank you! Woohoo! And there we go! Now we can make Krom! I guess this is a time I can tell you about these growths. They have a weakness. If you walk around them in a circle, they'll never hit you. See? That's how I'm staying alive right now. And there we have it! We go to our Black Forge, and look at that! The option to build Krom is available. We just need 30 iron, 20 bronze, and then 5 of that scale hide. We can also build the Carapace Spear and the Arbalest, just with some iron and some root. Just to show you why this thing's so fun, let's kill some goblins with it. The crossbow is unlike other bows. You don't hold it down. It's basically like a sniper shotgun. No sneak attacks, nothing crazy, no max skills, right? Watch this. Boo! <laughs> they just pop. It's so fun, too. You can just, like, shoot once and then it reloads, and then you just POW! <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> it almost one-shot that goblin! And this is why the crossbow is so awesome. It just feels powerful. Watch this. <laughs> Another way to sequence break in Valheim is to skip the weapons progression system entirely. 
To show you this point, I'm just gonna go kill a Seeker over there and have nothing but this club equipped. Valheim's one of those games where you can make a lot of friends. Out of all the friends available in Valheim, nobody's as loyal as a wolf. Because when you pet a wolf, they follow you to the death. I can pet all these wolves, and with my one pet, they will commit their lives to protecting my honor. Eventually, your pack will grow, and you will be able to take on large threats. I sense those two seekers over there. They are up to no good. Well, here we are. The fighting has commenced. Let's see how it goes. The seeker's in the air, and he's being eaten by wolves. Oh, the wolves have stunned him, and they destroyed the seeker. Oh, and they got the mosquito. You see that? That is how it's supposed to be. Loyalty at its best. Here's the other one. He ran off. Oh, see how you last now with a health bar. <laughs> wolves are amazing. And that's it for this video, everybody. If you want to support my work, then check out my tutorial about purchasing your own dedicated Valheim server to play with your friends. Comment below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Ciao!